to understand viruses, I want to first always, always go back to the lymphatic system because the lymphatic system is the culturing medium. That's your culturing medium because, you know, when they, they, when they want to culture bacteria, they'll take a swab, you know, and they do it of the mucosa. That's because that, that is the lymph system. And the lymph system is the body sewer system and main immune system. And this is where all the garbage goes. Even the blood dumps what it wants into the kit, into the sewer system. You know, again, the failing of the allopathic community is not understanding the lymph system, and yet it's the predominant fluid of the body. And this uh, ridiculous concept that the venous system uh, takes care of the sewage of the body is ridiculous. That'd be like pooping in your kitchen, pretty much mixing your stool in with your food. Because even though the venous system is coming back, it still has goodies in it. So it, it's ridiculous to even think that. I can't imagine how that idea got started. So understanding that the body's lymph system is the sewer system, and that's where the problem is and that that system deals with the corrosive side of chemistry or the acid side of chemistry is real important. So I know you've seen enough of these that you guys are getting that pretty good. So let's look at the role of a virus. A virus is like an antigen. I want you to think about uh, nature and various laws of nature. And there's one law of nature I think that's indisputable and that you see it on all these National Geographic and Discover channels. And this law is simple. The strong survive, the weaker consumed. Well, that's obvious because we see this all the time. If you're a big mama bear and you have a weak, sickly cub, some, somebody, some probably big old bear is going to kill it. And this is true in all life. It's hard to get your healthy babies to survive in nature, let alone the sickly ones. So real important to understand this law. If you're a mama bird and you have a nest of beautiful babies and one of them sickly, it goes right out the nest. The big issue here is you must apply that law. The strong survive and the weak are consumed cellularly. You've got a hundred trillion cells that comprise this human body and they're like little people. And if they're weak, your immune system, your immune cells, are the bad boys. They're designed to terminate those cells. What about that? Now, I don't know at what level of magnetic frequency that cells are terminated versus cells that live and can be rebuilt. I don't know that. In today's world, we should be more Star Trek-y where we have more of a frequency understanding like Dr. Reif was giving an indication. His downfall was he was blaming cancer on bacteria and, and virals and things. These are the effects. These are nature's little important creatures. And we kill them without understanding the reason. Now, virals are proteins, really. Still a little consciousness there, but they're not single-celled organisms like bacterium. So a big difference here. So when the body, body has to have a way to terminate cells that are damaged, and viruses do quite well with that. You can have HIV with no AIDS, but you can have hep C with truly no hepatitis. Meaning that if your liver isn't inflamed, isn't being chewed up by acids, you can carry a viral load. But if acids start breaking down liver cells, they're going to, you're going to have adhesion. You're going to have an immune response. It isn't an autoimmune problem. It's your body doing its job. Because cells have to be terminated so they can be replaced. Very important. It's, you would do that when you buy a house and you wanted to turn it over. You would go in and maybe put a new roof on it and tear out all the old rotten wood or whatever and rebuild it. That's how we do things. We get rid of the old and replace it with the new. And so does your body's constantly doing that. Especially if you're highly acidic, you're damaging cells, you see a lot of this uh, catabolic anabolic process kind of going in that way. Now, 
if you're breaking down cells in the body, this is where HIV can become a reality and breaking down in, in the body's effort uh, uh, through the immune system to terminate these cells. You can see this in, in blood work. Get yourself a microscope. And, or find one, take a little drop of your blood, put it on a slide and put it on that microscope. And you will see blood cells in your blood. And as these blood cells start to die, they lose their magnetic energy. Your magnetic energy is your shield of protection. The higher consciousness you have, the greater shield of protection you have. It's the same way with the cells. And so you notice the weak doesn't have a high auric field. They have a darker auric field. They have holes in their auric field. And of course then, you, then magnetics come and attach to that. This is all kind of magnetism, if you will. And so in this little drop of blood, you can see a little parasite wiggle out of the plasma and go right into the cell through the cell wall. And if you just keep watching, a macrophage, which is an immune cell, will come along and terminate that cell right while you're watching this in one little spot of blood. So it's pretty cool to see that. You have to understand nature shows us everything that goes on here. And we fear these things. If you fear anything, fear the sewage, the acid sewage. Don't fear what, how God is, has developed itself to take care of that. In asking whether HIV or AIDS is curable, there's nothing that's not. Even my sister, who is a naturopath, uh, had a young man cured of his AIDS within three months. Uh, I had a little baby from, uh, uh, it wasn't the Philippines, it was Indonesia. And uh, two uh, missionary couple had adopted her and found that she had had AIDS. So we had cleaned the AIDS out of her, and uh, there was, they were over back over in Indonesia and some kind of epidemic over there, I forgot what it was, and their little girl didn't get anything where everybody was dying and catching everything, and the Minister of Health asked her, what, you know, what's, how come her little daughter's so healthy? And she was telling him, and he wanted to give her a bunch of property to build a healing center on. So this is the kind of thing. No one should ever die of AIDS. So, understanding HIV, easy to clean virals out of the body. I say easy, this depends upon your lymph system. If you have chronic lymph congestion, which is what you see in a lot of HIV, is very chronic lymph problems, it's going to take you a while to get this out. Some people get rid of their HIV in a few months, some can take up to a year. Okay, I've never seen an HIV case that couldn't cure themselves. I've seen many of them stop on us and then not make it. Uh, understand your lymph system and understand your immune system. Those are the same. And understand what your body does and the strong survive, the weak are consumed. And this is true with hep C. This is true with any viral load. Now fungus. Fungus, uh, of course, this is the fermentation family. And fungus, uh, and I've touched about this in some videos here uh, uh, on sugar metabolism. Sugar metabolism is controlled by cortisol from the adrenal glands. When you're not metabolizing sugars properly and you're eating complex sugar, which we call starch, you've got more sugar than the body can metabolize. So some of it's going to turn into fat, but you're going to see a fermentation process. Also going to see a fermentation process if you mix fruits with vegetables or when you mix proteins with starch. Because these type of uh, digestive uh, enzymes and protein and starch are opposite. Your, your, your hydrochloric acid is going to f be somewhat neutralized by some of your alkaline digestive enzymes like amylase. This is a problem in the sense that when you mix these foods, uh, these sugars can ferment and will ferment because you, it just sits there and doesn't digest. When you mix fruits with vegetables, it simply says you really don't want to put a fast digesting food on top of a slow one. You know, there was a gentleman one time, he had a bowl of oatmeal for breakfast. And he was hungry after this bowl of oatmeal and he asked his wife if, he had, if she had any uh, watermelon in the refrigerator. And she said, yeah, honey, I do. So he ate a big piece of watermelon. He told her he's going to run to Home Depot and he'd be back in about an hour. 
Well, about two or three hours went by and the old guy didn't come back. About four hours went by and her husband hadn't been back yet and she's getting a little worried so she gets a call from the local sheriff's department and the deputy said, are you looking for your husband? And she said, yes, I am. And uh, she went to Home Depot this morning. He hasn't been back. He said, that's because I arrested him this morning for DUI. Now, she said, well, that's impossible. My husband doesn't drink. Well, she, he said, well, he's been yelling at us all morning, but in reality, his blood alcohol level was above the allowable range. He took this to court and won his case, and he proved that certain foods digest faster than others, and that watermelon, which should have went down first, took, uh, was sitting on top of that sticky, gluey, hard-to-digest oatmeal, and of course, sugars fermented, creating not only high blood alcohol levels, but higher blood sugar levels. So if you're a diabetic and you're trying to at least control your blood sugars while you're fixing your adrenals or your pancreas, then you want to definitely observe proper food combinations because fermentation and putrefaction will send blood alcohol and blood sugar levels up. And then you're going to invite the fungal family in. You can't hardly keep these microbes out of you and because they, somebody needs to ferment. Somebody needs to break down, so fungus and, uh, and, and bacterium, they're all, they're all around. So it's just nature's process of dealing with the breaking down. So important to lose the fear with all of this. If you've got moles growing on you, uh, you know, same thing. It's part of the fungal family, sugar metabolism problems, you can go right to the adrenal glands. And I suppose that you could find that with the pancreas as well. If you're not producing enough insulin that for carrying glucose, you might see uh, fermentation from that as well. You see more fermentation with complex sugars, though, than you do simple sugars. It is possible, though. Okay, so I hope I've answered that for you. If you have HIV, get on it. Get the raw going. Get on herbs. Get your kidneys fixed. Get your lymph moving. Build up your bone marrow. Build up your spleen. Build up your whole body. Health is the answer to curing every single thing that's out there. And don't think anything's uh, uh, not curable. The AMA can't cure anything, so nothing's curable to them.